Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I have a book haul today and that's despite my book buying ban. Um, I'm quite happy to say I failed again and that's okay. It's just something I, I put myself on a ban occasionally because I really want to read what's on my shelves and I've got so many good books. Um, I'll, I'll insert some footage so you can have a look. So this is my TBR shelf and so I have some non-fiction books here and then I have over here we move into the fiction and then some of these are also non-fiction because the system has just come unstuck really <laughs> as I've been adding books and it doesn't look like much it's really three relatively small shelves but when you look at all of these most of them are books I'm really excited to read and when you think about how long it will take to read each one this is why I'm sort of put myself on book buying bans because I really want to just sit and read all of these books before I add to it because whenever I add to it I just it starts to feel overwhelming and what happens is that I end up having this little stack of books down here so I've just been trying to fit I feel as if if they can all fit in these shelves really these two are the main ones because the other one with the non-fiction I may never get to those but if it can fit into these two shelves I feel as if it's it's doable but not that it, I, I ever get through them but I feel more confident um, but when it starts spilling out <laughs> as it is at the moment it just seems to be a never-ending stack so that is why there is a book buying ban in place from time to time and I break the book buying ban obviously but it's a I find it a good discipline to try to focus on um, the existing books so um, I have been on a ban which I've completely broken which is fine um, so I'll go through them in no particular order the first one is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich and this came out a couple of years ago and it was very buzzy and I, I'm sure that it was shortlisted for an award and I can't remember which one and it didn't quite appeal to me enough at the time but when I was in imprints recently which is a local bookstore here in Adelaide Jason recommended it and he said if I haven't read it I must read it and so um, purely on his recommendation I've bought it and it sounds I mean it does sound really good it's been called hauntingly brilliant masterly wrenching beautiful um, and she's a graduate of the Iowa Writers Workshop, which is, I think, quite prestigious. And so, you know, I'm expecting the writing to be really good and I just don't know what to expect from the story. So I'll be going into this one without, you know, any expectations really, but that's Idaho. Let me know if you've read it because I just can't remember. It rings a bell from one or two years ago and I can't remember much more about it so that's not very helpful but that's Idaho and the next one is Mateship with Birds by Carrie Tiffany so I read Exploded View by Carrie Tiffany she's an Australian author um, and her latest book Exploded View Annie and I read and we did it on the podcast but I had never read her before so loved Exploded View I thought it was just masterful really um, tense and bleak but also sort of funny well with a I wouldn't say funny but it, it certainly has a wry sense of humor um, and just incredibly restrained and this Mateship with Birds won the Stella Prize and I think it was the inaugural winner of the Stella Prize and so I thought this would be a good one to pick up after having read Exploded View because I want to read some of her other work now so that's Mateship with Birds I think it's about a well I don't know I think it's a, a sort of a romance but with some you know eccentricities but it's Australian country town a lonely farmer and he's watching the kookaburras, the birds next door. And then there's hardworking Betty, 
who's escaped to the country. And so then I'm, I'm not sure what happens next. So we'll see. That's Mateship with Birds. And then we have Now We Shall Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller. And this is a book my husband gave me. Uh, he got it in London at Daunt Books. And the bookseller there recommended it to him for me when he showed him what we've been reading on the podcast. And he said, well, she might like this. So this was shortlisted for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. And I don't know much more about it. It was also, um, he's also the author of Pure, which was a Costa Book of the Year. But I haven't read Andrew Miller before, so I feel like I should read this one. Captain Lacroix returns to England after fighting Napoleon's forces in Spain. And he has a shameful secret. And I really, I don't know what's going to happen. So this is a complete unknown, quite long but it's had very good reviews, so I'll look forward to that one. And then I bought a non-fiction called The Buried by Peter Hessler, which is really quite long as well, quite chunky. Now, I don't know anything about this other than it's about Egypt, but Peter Hessler is a great author, and he wrote a book called Driving Across the Country, Country Driving, about driving through China, which was really good, and I enjoyed that. I think his wife is the author of Factory Girls, which is also a very good book about China and the women who move from the country into the cities to work in the big factories and the conditions that they work in. So a really interesting couple, and I think from what it says on the back, they've moved to Egypt and he's been reporting from there and he's written this book. So I'm, re I'm very intrigued and purely on the basis of that it's Peter Hessler's writing, I think it'll be a, a great read, even though the subject matter um, will all be quite new to me. The archeolo An Archaeology of the Egyptian Revolution. So that should be very interesting. Now we have some books Okay, so also some new releases. The Pillars by Peter Pilates. So I read, he's a Sydney author, and I read Down the Hume earlier this year, which was his first novel, and it came out last year or the year before, but I hadn't read it before. And it's, it's a, that was a really gritty, working-class Sydney novel with a gay protagonist um, sort of set in Western, in the western suburbs of Sydney, and really confronting, but I thought very, very well done. And this is his follow-up novel, The Pillars. Pano is working as a writer. He's lobbying against a mosque being built across the road from his home. And he has the occasional meth fueled orgy. So this could be interesting. <laughs> he has found himself a gig ghost writing for a property developer. So there's a lot of consumerism aspirations and can pano escape so really interesting premise um that's the pillars and i'll look forward to seeing what he's done with this one after reading down the hume um next i bought 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by elif shafak and this has been long listed for the booker prize and also we're doing it on the podcast so i have to read that quite soon it's the last 10 minutes of the life of a woman who um, is dying and reflecting back on her life and elif shafak is an author i've been really meaning to read for a long time she's Turkish and I think based in London now, I could be wrong, um, but a wonderful speaker and really this should be really good and I think beautifully written. So I'll keep you posted, let me know if you've read it. And lastly, a book I bought last night, Poster Boy by Peter Drew. So this is, Peter Drew's an Adelaide artist. He's been putting up posters around the country and indeed overseas as well. And he's repurposed old photographs from National Library archives of people who applied for citizenship in Australia from going back, I think, 100 years. I'm not sure, I'll have to check when I read the book, um, but from you know historical photographs. And then he's reworked them and, and sort of written Aussie there. So quite provocative. 
And this is actually his memoir and it talks about his family and also about Australia and his art. And it's, I went to a talk with him last night and um, it was fascinating because he was asked a lot about are you an activist or an artist? And he had some really interesting things to say. I mean, he said he's an artist first and foremost, but of course art can be and has been used um, in activism. But, you know, he's got some quite nuanced views about that. So I'm really looking forward to this and we'll be speaking with him next week. So I'll have to read that very quickly. Um, but that's Poster Boy. So that is it for the book haul. I'd be really interested to know if you've read any of those ones. And we'll be looking at 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world and Poster Boy on the podcast soon. Oh, and I forgot, I also bought Too Much Lip by Melissa Lukashenko, which we're doing tomorrow on the podcast and I'm nearly finished. Um, and that just won the Miles Franklin Prize, which is wonderful and it's a great read. So I recommend that. So I haven't, that technically was also part of the August book haul aka book buying ban fail but anyhow I'll wrap I'll do a wrap up soon so you'll get to see how that one went um so let me know if you've read them or what you've been buying in August and I'll speak to you soon bye mm-hmm.